What's up guys? Welcome back to another Tamu video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the number one rated phone on Tamu for under a hundred dollars. Stay tuned. All right, so in terms of shipping, Tamu is pretty much the same. Um, you can expect your stuff within two weeks. So they haven't gotten outrageous yet, even though they have uh, received a lot of attention and a lot more people are flocking towards Tamu to purchase some goods, some cheap goods. So let's jump straight into this phone here. I've never heard of this brand before. So this is my first time. This is the Freyond F9, a dual camera. I'm not really expecting a lot from this phone because this phone only cost me $89. Comes in two colors, black and blue, and I got the I got the ice blue, I think it's called. Bye. Unbox it here. It is a thick box, so it seems like we get a lot more than just the phone. Okay decently sized so it's a 13 megapixel dual camera has a 5000 milliamp battery octa-core processor 8 megapixel front camera and 64 or 128 gigs of memory whatever you select i think i selected 64 so this is the 64 gig model now when i first started uh you know reviewing to move i did type phone to see what kind of smartphones they had and they didn't have any two weeks ago i did the same thing and i got quite a few results i do have a sim here and this is not my uh daily driver this is a separate line that i got specifically for this phone and the reason being is because i don't know what to expect with this phone everyone knows what happened to zte and why they're banned in the us uh, so I didn't want to take any chances. So I'll be using a, a completely different sim to test this phone out. Gotta love that sound. This play is nice and big. I like that. Let's go ahead and put in the sim. All right, so build quality is plastic all around. Everything is plastic. Nothing too fancy, nothing too get excited about but i do like the display the display is nice and big um i'm interested to see how the cameras operate the back is not removable so this is a sealed phone so you can't just you can't get the battery out or swap the battery or anything like that so uh, in the meantime though let's go ahead and just pop in my sim card uh, it looks like we can take two types of sim here so you do have the option to expand the memory if you want, which is really cool because you don't see that on flagships these days. All right, and what else do we have in the box? So also in the box, we have the manual, of course. We have a case. Flagships don't come with cases. It's really cool to see that we get in cases with these phones that cost less than $100. Just pop this on here to see how it looks. Oh, that's actually pretty nice. Look at that. That <laughs> looks pretty sick. What? I didn't even notice that. Oh, shoot. So we got a headphone jack. We got USB type C. And this is the speaker grill. We got the SIM tray, of course. The power button. It looks like it's a fingerprint sensor. This is the volume rocker, of course. We got the front facing cameras, the two cameras in the back says AI camera I don't know if that's true or not we'll test it out so far my first impressions are good I oh and you also get a screen protector on the front they put on a screen protector for you so yeah first impressions are are really good like I this is not what I was expecting not at all the two things that I'm more curious about is number one what's under the hood because it doesn't say on the box what processor this is running. It just says that it's an octa-core processor. And then number two, I also want to see what operating system this phone is using. In the box, we have the manual, the case that I just showed you. We have a brick, which again is no longer being included in newer smartphones. This is a USB type A. And then we have a USB type A to USB type C cable. 
It's actually really thick. I wonder if it's a data cable. And then a SIM tool removal. That's all that's in the box. All right, nothing left to do but to turn it on. Freon. Oh, so it's powered by Android. Android Go Edition. I think that's the lightweight Android software. Wow, that display is crisp. Look at that. And you can see at the top there, I'm getting LTE services. So it's working with my Verizon SIM card. Even though this design has been used and it's not what we're seeing on newer flagships these days, it's still a very attractive screen. Like, you know, it's not something you would expect from a phone that's less than $100. I tapped get started on the phone and it took, it took about maybe three, four seconds to actually move on. So it's it's not a quick phone so it's uh setting up our phone okay do you want to copy your data no thank you okay now it's asking for a google sign-in so i do have quite a few google sign-ins so again i don't want to use uh my account that i use every day let's just say i don't trust it okay so it's asking me to add a phone number okay now we're getting account info set up fingerprint so I think it does have a uh, fingerprint sensor. Let's see. Yes, it does. Okay, now setting up Google Assistant. And there you go. The phone is set up, operates, you know, just like a regular Android phone. You can see all your apps. It's not a fast phone by any means, but decent enough, right? I mean, going to YouTube takes a minute but it eventually launches. Compare that to like Galaxy Z Fold, like when you launch it, it's almost instant. Again, this, when you launch YouTube, takes a minute. But I mean, that, that's still not bad. That's still doable. That's, that's reasonable, right? And of course, when you're scrolling and YouTube, it's not, it's, it's not smooth. It's very jittery. So performance is okay. But I mean, what do you expect from a phone that costs less than $100? I mean, at least they give you a very nice display that's very crisp, very clean. But yeah, that's a quick unboxing of the F9. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take this phone for a spin and I'm gonna live with it for about a month, or maybe two weeks, I don't know, I'll see. And uh, report back on how functional this phone really is. And uh, whether phone that you should be considering or skipping. Stay tuned. So I spent a little under a week with this phone and the main reason being because it's not compatible with Verizon although it shows that it's connected to Verizon's network and I'm getting the Verizon name on the top and also the signal strength on the right. Despite all that it's not working with Verizon. I can't make calls. I can't send text messages. I keep getting this message saying network busy. This is definitely missing the required bands in order to utilize Verizon. So I couldn't use it for more than a couple days. But I did play around with the phone and I gotta say, it's not a bad phone for under $100. It reminds me a lot of the uh, of the blue phones. Um, I used a couple of them back in the day, hated them. I eventually uh, went back to the drawing board, did a lot of research and found out that the Motorola 
G5 was rated the best budget phone of 2017. And, uh, once I got the Motorola G5, it was just like smooth sailing from there. The G5 is such an awesome phone. It was so much better than the Blue and it's by far my favorite budget phone. So I did pull it out from my cabinet and compared it with this phone. And I got some interesting results. So although this phone is running Android 12 Go, it has an ARM Unisoc chipset, which is about a decade old. So there is some vulnerabilities with this phone just because it's newer and it's running Android 12 Go edition doesn't make it more secure. Um, it has one processor, eight cores, runs at 1.2 gigahertz with two gigs of RAM. It has a single core score of 127 and a multi-core score of 467. So not really great numbers, but it's decent. Then I did the uh, same test, Motorola G5. And again, this phone is from 2017. It's running Android 7. And unfortunately, there's no more updates for Android. Uh, it has the uh, ARM Qualcomm chip, one processor, eight cores, just like this Freon phone. Um, it has two gigahertz and four gigs of RAM, has a single core score of 150 and a multi-core score of 547. So although the G5 is an older phone, it actually beats out the uh f9 not by a lot but it beats it out and i thought that was really interesting because like i said the motorola g5 is from 2017 and it's still holding up strong i still use it from time to time not as my daily driver but as a second phone to use with my dji drones and things like that so anyway after that fun comparison you know i did some uh I did some gaming on the, the device and uh, I was really impressed with the gaming performance on the device. Um, of course, not all apps are going to run on this phone. So if you try to download an app, you might get a message saying that this app is not um, compatible with your device. So I tried to download Grid Autosport on this phone and yeah, it wasn't compatible. So I wasn't able to use Grid on this phone. But I did test a bunch of other racing games. I did Real Racing. Uh, from EA Sports, I did Roblox, Asphalt 8, that was the third game. And all of these games ran pretty good on the phone. I was actually very surprised. I thought for sure I would get a bunch of stuttering. That was not the case. Every game ran decently on this phone. Playable actually, you know, you can actually win playing these games using this phone. The, the, the stutter is not that bad. Now, you're not gonna be getting like, you know, 60 frames per second. Like, if I were to guess, I would say games are probably running at around 23 or, or, or 20 frames per second. That's what I felt like it was. But this phone is not perfect. There are a couple of cons. Um, the first one is that this is not a wide angle lens and they don't claim that it's a wide angle lens, but it's a macro lens and I gotta say, I don't, I don't know a lot of people who would prefer their secondary lens to be a macro lens. Like I would prefer a wide angle lens, not a macro lens, but the macro lens does work good, good enough. Uh, you have to go into a special macro mode in order to use it. You can't just switch between the lens like you can with most smartphones. Number two, this is the biggest one. This phone is really slow. I'm unboxing it. I was super excited about it. I thought like, you know, this phone had some potential. But then after using it for like a couple of hours, the honeymoon stage quickly dissipated. Number three, of course, just like how this game, I wasn't able to play Grid. There are apps that will not install on this phone because they're not supported by this phone so if you have like a very important app for you maybe for financing or something like that that is a possibility that you need to be aware of that it might not be able to run on this device there's ways around it you can probably get a download an apk file and install that apk file on this phone uh, however, if you're the type of person that likes, you know, security and peace of mind, that's probably not something that you're going to want to do. Number five, of course, I said it earlier, this does not work with Verizon. So it does not work with 
um, all carriers, all US carriers. I didn't test it with AT&T or T-Mobile, but that is also something you need to be aware of that this phone doesn't necessarily work with all the US carriers. So especially if you're on Verizon, this is not something you're gonna wanna get. You're gonna wanna avoid this phone because like I said, it just does not work at all on Verizon. Six. <laughs> The speakers are are terrible. They actually hurt your ears quite a bit. So I was like, you know, it's a cheap phone, so I understand it's not going to be a high quality speaker. But then I played the same video on my Motorola G5, and the sound was just so much better. You know, the G5 is a $250 phone, and this is a $80 phone, so big difference. But kind of wish that they would have used a better quality speaker because, like, a lot of people. Uh, use their phones now for content consumption and so if you got a crappy speaker that actually hurts your ears if it's too high um, It's not gonna be very comfortable to use look at Samsung's newest generation of foldables They look very similar to last year matter of fact you probably didn't even realize that this is last year's phone So Samsung makes two foldables right now. There's the Z flip 5 and the Z that's been both powerful and efficient in the S23 series, and it gets a new and improved hinge that's smaller in every dimension and actually has less moving parts. It's simpler, which should help with everyday durability, and it now allows the phone to fold completely flat. I don't really see Samsung has gotten rid of the gaps, so it folds down a little bit smaller, a little thinner, and is less likely to catch any dust or debris on the inside because it's flat. But the main upgrade is definitely the biggest yet. That was a 1.9 inch cover display. This one is graduating up to a 3.4 inch flex window. But uh, it does have a headphone jack so you don't have to be too worried about it. And then again it also supports Bluetooth so you can connect a Bluetooth headset to it. Number seven. Again the chipset is about a decade old. Now that should be a huge red flag especially for people who value security being a decade old means that this phone does have some vulnerability so it's not exactly a safe phone to use even though it's new and you're buying it today in 2023 and it has Android 12 that doesn't necessarily mean that you're 100% covered because again at the end of the day under the hood is a old chipset that's almost a decade old and so that can potentially open you up to vulnerabilities. So if a security is a must for you, this phone ain't gonna be it. And then number eight, because this phone runs Android Go and so it's optimized to try to conserve uh, RAM and conserve processing power, apps automatically close once you leave the app. So let's say for example, you jump into Asphalt 8 or Real Racing and it's downloading um, you know, a bunch of information from their servers. If you close the app or the phone closes or locks and you unlock the phone, guess what? If you're 50% done with downloading, you have to start all the way back to 0% because the app will reset. This happened to me at least three times while downloading information for real racing. Um, that means that uh, more than likely you're gonna constantly be logging into your apps. Even if you just switch apps, you'll have to log back into the app from the beginning. So it, it can be messy and it can be annoying. So just keep that in mind if you're looking at this phone. Despite all those cons though, there are a few pros and the biggest one by far is that screen. Look at that screen. That screen is so beautiful. It's not like the latest Galaxy devices, but it's a pretty nice screen for what you pay. I really dig this screen. I like it a lot. HD, the image is very vibrant. I don't notice any pixelation. I don't notice any fuzz. It looks very crisp. Number two, it's got a fingerprint. For a phone that's under $100, it does support a fingerprint reader and so you don't have to use your password to unlock your phone you can easily use your finger is it responsive no it's not going to be on the same level as like the flagships or even the mid-range phones but it still works number three this thing takes decent photos this is an ai camera and i can verify that there is some ai going on when you take a photo uh, I took a photo of my cat the first time. It didn't recognize what I was taking a photo of. And so no editing was done to the photo. But the second time the AI camera kicked on 
and it found the cat and after I took the picture it kind of boosted up the saturation around the cat. Really cool for a phone that's under $100 you get some kind of uh, AI going on. It's not on the same level as Google, you know, kind of just looks like it just boosts up the saturation um, for a subject in the photo. Uh, but it's still pretty cool and i have to say that the quality of the photos are pretty good i took some photos of my car uh, i took some photos of the cloud and and i was actually really impressed it has hdr so it makes those guys look really good and i'm really happy with the photos you know it, it's definitely photos that you can share to social media and uh you know be happy with them the same could be said about videos too videos are uh good on this camera i have no complaints with the videos because again this is a cheap phone i was expecting some really dirty looking videos uh, that look really grainy and that was not the case. Of course, the front facing camera is not as high quality as the rear facing camera, but it still looks pretty decent. Uh, of course, when you're using the rear camera, that's when you get that HD uh, quality and <laughs> I have nothing bad to say about the videos. Check it out for yourself. So this is the video and the front facing camera. It's maxed out at 720 at 30 frames per second. So it's not high quality, but it's not bad. I, I can't find anything to complain about it really. I mean, it's usable for a hundred dollars. Now on the back, we switch over to 1080 at 30 frames per second. And uh, this is how it looks. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's not 720 like the front facing cameras, but it's not 4K like some smartphones. Just gonna swap it over and, you know, do some normal videoing. Kind of jitter, like ghosting. Auto exposure is really good. And not too bad. So that's everything about this phone, right? So now it's the important question. Is it worth it? Now here is where you might get shocked at what I say next, but hear me out. I consider myself a green guy, right? Take a look at my desktop and laptop collection. These are all equipment that people were throwing out, but I rebuilt them, I repurposed them. I don't believe in putting tech in our landfill. They don't belong in our landfill, right? I want to do my part and keep whatever I can out of my landfill, which is why I still hold on to every single phone that I have not been able to sell or you know trade in to another company i hold on to them and so that's where the problem with this phone comes in these things are going to eventually stop working and even if they don't stop working i do feel like a lot of people are going to be frustrated with this device when they actually start using it and i fear that some people will probably just throw it away uh, because it's so cheap feel like these phones will eventually end up in a landfill and that's not something i want now is it a phone that uh, you want to get for yourself not really you can if you don't do a lot of work on your phone but if you do a lot of work on your phone like you use teams you use outlook you know use productivity applications on your phone daily for your job or something like that this is not going to cut it this is just going to frustrate you skip this don't buy it this is more of a phone that I would say that you would get maybe a kid who wants a smartphone, uh, but you don't want to buy them the flagship. You can get them this. Even if you buy your kids this, I don't feel like they're going to hold on to it very long. They start trying to game with their friends who have flagships. Eventually, they're going to come back to you and ask for a flagship. If you buy them a flagship, what do you do with this phone then, right? So I think a better alternative to this phone would actually be buying an older flagship device. And there is a flagship device device that I actually have in mind, the Galaxy S9 would be a far better uh, phone than this phone and it actually costs around the same. You can pick it up for about $100 to $150 and what you're getting with the Galaxy S9 is just so much more. You're getting um, a phone that has a single core score of 505 and a multi-core score of 1934. That just dwarfs this phone. 
completely obliterates it. It's just so far ahead of this phone, it's not even funny. Apart from all that, you're also getting four gigs of RAM and you're getting a beautiful OLED screen that's capable of 2960 by 1440. You're getting a camera that can do 4K, you can do slow motion, you can do a lot of other fun Samsung things that they allow on their phone. So I feel like that's a much better phone. Now, some of you might be like, well, the S9, you can no longer update Android and that's true. You won't get support with Android on the S9, but guess what? Although this is running Android 12 Go, the Go edition is very important because Android 12 Go is not the same as regular Android 12. But just because this phone is running a some strain of the latest Android, just because it's running that doesn't mean that this phone is secure. Again, this is running a chip that's almost a decade old. You're still open to vulnerabilities. I feel like you would be much safer on the Galaxy S9 running an old Android than you would be on this old chip running a slightly modern Android. Just go with the S9. Not only are you getting a better phone, but you're also buying a used a uh, flagship phone, you're keeping it out of our landfill, you're recycling it and reusing it and repurposing it. And that is way better than buying this cheap $100 brand new phone, in my opinion. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'm done. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you didn't, thumbs down work also. Thanks for hanging out with me. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like these. I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you